As you know, I am an adopted son of our dear father and patriarch of the Ide family, Chief Patrick Emurode Sito Ide, which is why I am here, not just in my personal capacity, but also as a representative of the federal government of Nigeria, to offer thanks to God and to pay our last respects to this great Nigerian leader. I also bring you all, especially the family, the felicitations of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari. I think I know why God gave Chief Ide such a long life. It was because he knew he had so much to contribute, both locally and nationally, and indeed he did so much. It is simply incredible that this great and illustrious son of the Robo Kingdom managed to do all that he managed to do in one lifetime. He was, as we've heard, as a young man involved in the struggle for Nigeria's independence, a member of the Zikist movement under the leadership of the great Zik of Africa. And he later joined the NCNC. He was at the same time at the forefront of the struggle for the creation of the Midwest region before going abroad to study law. He was a founding member of the Midwest State Movement, where he served as an assistant secretary, a member of the working committee. We know that upon his return from the UK, he then became the assistant legal advisor to the Midwest Movement until the creation of the Midwest region in 1963. Years later, Chief Ide's tenacity, his extensive goodwill, and his contacts were needed in the struggle for the creation of Delta State. And today we have Delta State, a product of his tenacity, a product of his own wisdom, and a product of his commitment to his people. During the Second Republic, we all know that Chief Ide was elected a member of the Federal House of Representatives, where he represented the Ugeli Federal Constituency. In this position, he earned his track record of service to the Robo people and Nigeria between 1979 and 1983. He was always a progressive, being solidly and believing in the liberal social democratic ideals that that tendency professed, which meant that for years he was faithfully and consistently in the opposition. He was at various times a member of the executive committee of the Social Democratic Party in Delta State, and then the Alliance for Democracy in the state. But as early as 1961, we know that he was called to the English bar as a barrister of the Grace Inn. And after having obtained a law degree from the prestigious University of Wales, but he would need that for the various consequential cases that he would argue through the years, many of them going to the Supreme Court, including the defense of Justice Daniel Ikomi, who was then falsely accused of murder. And also, he was on the legal team of Chief MKO Abiola almost a decade later. When we gather to commemorate the passing of a loved one, it's natural to feel a sense of loss and sadness. But in the case of a man in whose name we are gathered today, Chief Patrick Emurode Sito Eden, our grief is mitigated by gratitude and our sadness is moderated by the sense of the celebration of the life of a man who spent his life in the service of his people and his nation. Thus we are not gathered here merely to celebrate his length of days, but to honor the consistent quality of a man that has been demonstrated across the span of several decades. If there's a single word that defines this great son of the Robo Kingdom and of Nigeria, it is, as the parish priest has said, a life of service, a life of service. His life laden with illustrious accomplishments of the highest order is an elegant testament of his devotion to service. He earned his achievements through an unflagging diligence. Chief Ide's dedication to his people meant that for him, personal achievement was not enough. 
He had the skills, the tenacity, and the drive to have committed himself purely to his own enrichment. But he had a social conscience, a strong moral conscience, and instead he committed himself to a much grander cause, that of the people of the Midwest region, that of the people of this community and Nigeria at large. He was a quintessential nat nationalist who never forgot his roots. It's no surprise, therefore, that at home he was a prophet with honor, holding several titles, the Okwako Orere of the Utu Hiewen, <laughs> and, the, and the Ushota of the Ugoen Kingdom. All of these attest to the recognition that he gained at home as one of the most illustrious sons of this community. Despite being well rooted in his community, he remained very vested in the trajectory of our country. And he took on the mantle of elder statesman with the same dignity and grace that, he had, that has always defined his life. He was, a res he was respected across partisan lines. And in 2015, President Muhammad Buhari and myself witnessed firsthand the breadth of the esteem in which he was held when he organized town hall meetings for us during the campaigns. His reputation was such that he drew on so many people to our cause, despite party affiliations. People simply respected him. People simply accepted what he said and accepted us as well because of the man that presented us to them. I've had the privilege of having private audiences with him twice when he visited. And on both occasions, I was moved by how despite his advanced age, he cared enough about the direction of our country to personally visit and offer his counsel. It was such a kind gesture, and I remain grateful for it. And for me, uh, yet again, those encounters offered an insight into the quality of the man. And there's no question at all. I mean, I interacted with him several other times, and I refer to those two occasions because there were occasions when he chose to visit and to give counsel and to advise. And he was always forthright, very direct. He didn't, he, he, you could see that his only concern was about our nation. Never asked for anything for himself. Never once, even when near asking anything for himself. He was always, how are we going to make things better? How will this nation make progress? At the time of his passing, Chief Ide was the oldest legal practitioner on the Supreme Court roll call in the South-South region. And so for Robo Land, for Delta and Nigeria, we've lost a towering figure and a true leader. But we must take solace in the rich example of service, fidelity to truth and justice, high patriotism, and a strong social conscience that defined this notable leader. Many, including myself, who had the priceless advantage of his counsel, of his insights and great wisdom, are proud to be called his protégés. His all-encompassing legacy also includes those thousands whose lives he touched in various ways. And so on behalf of the government and people of Nigeria, I extend sincere condolence to our mother, his dear wife, mother of his eight children, Mrs. Onajite, Lady Anne, and all the children. The Lord will comfort you all, and may the memory of our dear father, Chief Emurode Sito Ide, remain forever blessed. Thank you very much, and God bless you.